Great morning, holy brothers! Thank you so much for joining us on our pathway to peace. peace in the Garden of Peace. Last time we were talking about the different levels. And we said the first level was knowing that everything comes from God. Then we started talking about the second level, that not only knowing everything comes from God, but also that everything that He does is absolutely without question for our Best. Thank you very much, yes. And then we went off on a nice little tangential story. Now we're going to get back to the text itself. We're inside the second level, and we're going to go from there. Reality speaks for itself. He and his wife were on the collision course. He said he hadn't listened to the hints that Hashem sent him through the wife's complaints, right? Through her arguments, and they were ready to explode. He and his wife failed to deal with the problems effectively. Hashem stepped in and made her kick him out. In the doghouse, because he needed some time alone, he needed some space to be able to, to reflect, to be able to do repentance, to be able to do teshuva, and that never would have happened if he was in that situation. So God had to take him by the cane when he was on stage and whoop, exit stage right. Yes? Hashem cannot evict the wife and mother from the home, because that wasn't proper and it wasn't practical. You know what would happen if my wife wasn't home, as opposed to if I wasn't home? If I'm not home, okay, things still get done. But if she's not home, that uh, piles up. How often would we take out the garbage? If nobody was telling it to every minute. How often would the laundry get done, get folded? Right? Taking care of the kids, making sure they have food, snacks, everything. And they're much better at it than we are, let me tell you. So the husband, who was the one who was kicked out, this break in the tension gave him and his wife the peace and the space that they needed to, to be able to think, to be able to develop, to be able to use their minds properly, to do some serious introspection, to take counsel, to understand, to learn, and to correct the lives. In truth, Hashem has done them a great chesed, a real true kindness here. Now, level number three. Third level of the Muna, third level of faith. Besides for knowing God, knowing God does everything for our best all the time, and the third level is what? Can you guess? After you know all that, then it comes to taking your mind and putting it into action. What does Hashem want from me? Especially now. Yeah, I know it's for my best. I know everything's happening for a reason. But now, what am I supposed to do about it? Now just keep it up here. Follow through. Follow through. When you want to hit, you wind up a little bit, you're going to get a little bunt. But when you take a whack and you start back and you follow through, and after you hit that ball, you keep that energy going, that's going to be out of the ballpark. When you're bowling too, the first thing that I was taught is when you let go of the ball, keep your hand and pretend that it's going up to the heaven. I don't care that you let go of the ball already. The motion, you follow through, and that ball is going to have so much more power and keep going on the right angle that you want it to. Because if the second you let go, you start jerking your hand, many times before you let go, that's what's going to happen. Now, free of the pressures and free of the tensions of the home, the husband can really, honestly, work on himself. Now, let's start to learn what mistakes were going on and look for the root of his problems. Where is everything stemming from? What's actually going on? Why are you lashing out at your wife? Why do you have such a small fuse that things can explode at the slightest things that go wrong in your eyes? He can then pray about situations and he can fix what needs to have fixing. If he truly repents and he looks inside himself, and he wants to come closer to God and do Teshuvah to return, then the one who truly evicted him wasn't his wife. Hashem is in control of everything we know. And we know it's for his best. So if Hashem is the one who did this to him, stop and think, why is Hashem doing this to me? What can I learn? How can I be better? And how can I bring myself back to where I want to be and where he wants me to be? Then Hashem will take him and bring him right back to his house. He won't need to argue with his wife about coming back. He won't need to try to explain to her it's irrelevant, it's unnecessary. You try to argue with your wife, you try to explain things logically to her, it's not going to work. Um, about two years ago, I sent you a video uh, called It's Not About the Nail. Two years ago? Is that me? Or a year ago, whatever it was. It was maybe I sent it to Eldon, actually. <laughs> I, I, it was one of my favorite <laughs> short videos. Whenever it popped up, and it, I'll have to share it with you. I can send you a link. 
Do you ever see this about the, with the woman with the nail on her head? No. It's one of my favorites. She's sitting there on the couch. It's, it's a really great video. She's sitting on the couch with her husband, and she's going like, you know, every day I'm waking up with such a pain in my head. And it's like throbbing. It's bothering me all the time. And he's like sitting there looking at her with the things sticking out of her head. And he's like, honey, you know, I think it's like, he's like, Sha! Let's listen, let me talk, let me listen. He's like telling, he's like, there's a nail in your head. And <laughs> what is wrong with you? She's trying, she's trying to think of other things that are bothering her. Why it's coming? It's like, why doesn't she understand? There's a nail in her head! Pull it out! Knock it off! She's like, I don't want to hear about your solutions. Stop telling me how to fix everything. And she's like, every day I put on my sweaters, and now all my sweaters are snagged, and I can't understand why. He's like rolling his eyes. <laughs> what is wrong with this woman? And he's like, he's like, you're right. Honey, I'm sorry. I'm listening to you. I feel your pain. It's very hard. I'm here for you, whatever you need. And she's like, okay. And she goes to give him a kiss, and boom, the nail hits him in the head. And he's like, oh, darn it! <laughs> anyway, the whole thing is about, it's not about the nail. It's a, you're not here to look for solutions. Don't try to tell her. What you think the answer is, even if you know you're right, it doesn't matter. You're not going to convince her. It's not going to help. That's not your goal. That's not your role. How can we do things to perfect ourselves, to be able to help her in the situation she's in? She doesn't want a quick solution. She doesn't want to hear about an answer. That's not the goal. That's not the point of it. What is God trying to get me to do about myself, my priorities, and my views on things? And how can I be a better person for it? What can I do to improve my mitos, my character traits? That's what it's all about. Never get lost in the bigger picture and focus on the details which are not going to matter at the time. And it might even get her more upset at you because of it. Hashem will be the one, God will be the one to put you back where you belong when you're ready. That's it. One must deal with the problems while they are still small. Well, they're still relatively insignificant. Especially with the difficulties of Shalom Bayez and peace in your home. You must immediately apply these three levels of emuna, of faith, and not wait for a crisis to get out of control, to snowball and erupt. That way, small problems don't mushroom into major crisis. <clears throat> Emergency situations. The husband will save himself, his wife and his children, tons of anguish, tons of grief, tons of stress. Gone. So super simple. Just see the three things that God, I know everything comes from Him. Everything. No matter what she says, no matter what I run into, everything is from Hashem. Nothing is beyond that rule. And everything Hashem does is for my absolute best. I love Him. He loves me. And three, now that I know all that, what am I supposed to be doing differently? How can I change and how can I be better? Three rules. Everything is fine with me. Sometimes, a husband feels that he is behaving superbly, pristine, crystal. He's amazing. I'm doing everything I should, checking off all the boxes. Everyone should love me because I'm so amazing. And I'm behaving so well at home, I'm doing the best that I could be. Therefore, if a wife complains, and a wife says some things, What's the first thing he's going to do to do to it? Dismiss it. You have a problem? Okay, I get it. That's your problem. But it's not because of me. You have an issue right now. You're going through that time of the month. You're having some hormonal problems. You had a fight with your coworker. You didn't get along with my mother yesterday at the dinner table. It's not for me. This is something that she's dealing with. I have to deal with it because she's upset. But he thinks it has nothing to do with him. He missed the first rule. Everything happens from God. It's not from her. It's from God. And why is this being presented to you right now is the question. So if he feels that it's not for him or from God, then he will easily brush it off and think that he's arrogant because he's so good and other people's problems are not my problems. I might have to try to help them, but it's not because of me. I'm the root of her upsetness right now. It wasn't me that got her upset. She's mad at the kids. She's mad at my wife. She's, she's mad at my mother. Whatever it may be. Many, 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 many things like that. It's not my fault. Thank God she's not yelling at me today. You know, she's only mad at the kids. His self-appraisal is meaningless. His wife's feelings are what count. 
This is what God is using right now. Her happiness is 1,000 million Google percent. His responsibility. Her happiness is your problem. It's in your control and if she's not happy, stop and think, why is my wife not happy? And what can I do in myself to help make myself better so that God will make her better? If you're good, it was going to spread to everybody around you. But stop and think, why am I seeing this now? What is the message for me? And how can I be better? If his wife isn't happy, you better find out why and do something about it. Don't just sit there and let her fester and explode and build up. An engineer can work hard all day trying to fix an engine. He may even change all the parts and feel that he's done everything he should to ensure it's smooth functioning. Come in a little bit. But if that engine doesn't work at the end of the day, after he tries so hard and works so hard to fix it, has he done his job? Why do they bring the car to the mechanic? So he can try all day or that he can fix it? Does the customer care how long he spent working on the engine when they come to pick it up? Most of the time not. No. They want a job done. They want something fixed. How hard you put it, how many ways you have to think about it. I, my door wasn't closing. So I, oh, is this and this? And that? Just, just get me a door that works. Fix it for me. And that's what I care about. You know, it's nice for you to have some feelings and to care about other people and how much they're putting into it. But at the end of the day, you're supposed to do a job. And that's what I care about. Was the job done? Was it successfully finished? If not, I'm going to have to go to another mechanic. Now you wasted my time. You wasted my money. And you still didn't do what I needed you to have done. If the engine doesn't work, he has not done his job. End of story. By the same token, if your wife is unhappy, you're the husband who hasn't done the job. It's wild to think about. Because we don't want to have that responsibility. If your wife is upset, it has to be my fault all the time. Why? Right? Because it's not my problem. It's her problem. But Hashem is telling us, this is our responsibility. We have to make her happy, and then it's going to bring out everything in our life to have so much more simcha. It's you and God. What pieces he moves on your chest table is nobody else touching it, them. That's it. Everything is from him, and it's our messages to interpret, to understand our world and our reality is designed, produced, and moved by him. That's it. Take the hints. It's difficult for an evicted husband to accept his lot with a moona. You're mad. You're out of the house. You got, got kicked out of the bedroom and you're sleeping on the couch. Is this the first thing for you to do to be happy about it? Most men are going to be even more enraged as they were before she kicked him out. Now they're pissed. Now they can't even be with their wife. But the fact that it has reached that point is a sign that he is way far from where he needs to be. That faith is lacking. The connection to God is severing. He's cutting that rope. Hashem always starts out, always, with gentle hints, little pokes. Right? He's trying to push you in the right direction because he loves you. He's not going to start slamming you, taking away all your money, burning down your house, that's not what God wants. That's not what a parent wants for their kid. They want their kid to be successful. They want them to be happy. They want them to have an amazing life. They're not going to do things that are drastic, that are brutal, that are very harmful. He wants us, listen, just wake up. Hello? Yeah, for a minute. I'll help you. Help you get an alarm. Just wake you up in the morning. A little gentle. Uh, your wife might even tell you nicely. You know, honey, it'd be great if you go to Minion, whatever it might be, go to class. It helps our marriage. It helps our, our life. It's amazing, you know? But if we don't pay attention to those little hints, they're going to get louder. They are going to get harder and harsher. But it's not because he hates us. It's rather because he loves us. Right, holy brother? Does God hate you or does God love you? Everywhere. If we're not being aroused and woken up, we'll get not a little touch on the face. We're going to get a serene love slap. Smack you in the face. Punch you in the other direction to get you to go where you need to go. It's going to get extreme. 
a man who got to the stage of being evicted, being kicked out of the house or the bedroom, and he's had many little slots before. He's had many little prides before, but he has not been listening, not been paying attention. But if he had a Muna, and he had the understanding and faith that everything is from God, and for my best, and I need to do something about it, he would have looked for the message a long time ago, buddy. Then Hashem was sending him via some little arguments, via some little complaints that his wife had, instead of ignoring her and not listening to what's been going on. He would have listened carefully to her words and tried to get to the root of the problem and then done something about it and never would have been kicked out, I guarantee you. Never would have been gotten to that level, to these problems. He would have prevented that situation from deteriorating, from breaking down and getting to a breaking point. Hashem does not want that for him. But he loves him so much that he wants to get him there if he's not listening to the harsh stuff, the harsh stuff. When I get people out of bed in the morning, when they ask me beforehand to come wake them up for a minion on Shabbos, some people, a little knock on their door. No problem. Because they're listening for it. They're ready. They want to wake up. They told me already beforehand. Some people have to leave their door unlocked. and have to come in and bang on the bedroom window, on the bedroom door. Don't go in, but I bang on the door. Some people sleep on the couch, leave the door open, want me to come in, and either yank them out of bed or pour water on their head. Because otherwise they know they're not getting up. How much of a smack do they need to get? If they want it so badly, they'll do it themselves. They won't even need me to come to their house to get them up in the morning. Why do I need to go to your house? Yeah, I want to get up, I want to get up. How badly do you want to get up? That's the question. So I do all those types of things because everybody's on a different level. The question is, what level are you on? What are you willing to do so you don't get to a worse level? And how much are you going to recognize God in your life and accept Him lovingly because He loves you so much too? Have an awesome day, amazing rest of your day.